What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite, or least favorite, cruiser-loving, sport bike riding, yammy noob kidnapping, warm-up act, spite. Wonder when I'm gonna graduate to the next level. I mean, is it now? I am writing my own scripts, after all. But anyway, since it's been established that I have a soft spot for Harleys and Yam didn't want to touch this one with a 10-foot pole, it's time for me to talk about a few things you need to keep in mind when you want to take the plunge into that Harley life. Usually the way a video like this works is Yam will talk about the bikes, throw some facts at you, then go over some pros and cons, but I wanted to take this in a slightly different direction. Everybody knows what a Harley is, and knows generally about their history, so there's no point going over all of that again. Instead, I wanted to take a look at some of the main arguments people who've never ridden a Harley before will tell you when you ask them if they think you should get one. Now before you flame me as some sort of HD apologist, I'm going to bring up some legitimate negative points to balance out what I'm saying, because in truth, Harleys are enjoyable and simple machines, but they're also flawed. Let's take a look, shall we? First up is performance. This conversation is gonna go something like this. Hey man, I'm thinking about getting a Harley. No way man, they're so slow, they can't even leave the gas station without scraping their pegs. Now there's some legitimate grievances to be leveled at Harley when it comes to performance. Let's take for example the Iron 883 compared to something like the Kawasaki Vulcan S. There, I'm talking about it, are you happy now? These are fairly comparable beginner cruisers. Let's set aside for the moment that the Vulcan comes in almost $1,500 cheaper and just look at specs. The Iron makes 54 foot-pounds of torque to the Vulcan's 46. Now to the uninitiated, you might think, well, the Harley's making more power, so it's the better ride. But the performance-minded rider is looking at the HD as underpowered compared to the 600 class of sport bikes, which is regularly putting down north of 120 horsepower and 50-ish foot-pounds of torque from an engine two-thirds the size. Now this is where you, my budding cruiser boy, need to realize what your sport bike brethren don't. Getting a Harley is not about getting a race machine. Harley makes it clear outright. I mean, when was the last true race bike that Harley built? Not Eric Buell, Harley. When you buy into a Harley, it's really about leaving your ego at the door and just enjoying a bike that wants to lope down the highway at 3000 RPM. Before I move on though, I did want to make the point that you can absolutely transform your Harley into a fast boy bike. Things like the Hammer Performance Jugs for the 883 and better cams can have that bike making something like 130 horsepower and a face melting 96 foot-pounds of torque in a nice linear package. But if you're chasing performance, you really should just get a naked bike or a sport tour. You'll be so much happier and it'll be way less effort. Hey, that reminds me, if you're in the market for a bike and you don't want the hassle of doing all of the research, why not sign up to win one of our giveaway bikes? We've got the Triumph Street Triple R, the KTM Duke 390, and the Yamaha XSR, which I think is the perfect gateway drug to that cruiser life. They're all going to three lucky people over on yamminoob.co. Head over there and get yourself entered to win. You'll get access to our Discord server, which is a great place to just hang out and talk bikes, regardless of whether you're a leather daddy Harley boy or just starting out. Beyond all that good stuff, signing up is the best way to support all the things we do here. Seriously, we could not make all these silly videos or giveaway bikes without all of our awesome members. If you want to sign up, just click that link down below to yamminoob.co and get started. Now let's talk about the literal elephant in the room, weight. This conversation is going to go something like this. Hey man, I'm thinking about getting a Harley. Dude, the Sportster weighs like a thousand pounds. Just get a metric cruiser, they're so much lighter. Now, this is both accurate and complete BS at the same time. Let's look at three models of Harley and put them up against something comparable from a metric manufacturer. For our average bikes, let's look at the Sportster Roadster versus something like the Yamaha Bolt R-Spec, the top end of the Bolt line. The Harley clocks in at 551 pounds wet, while the Bolt tips the scales at 542. Now I weren't much for book learning, but 551 minus 542 is 9. Now that's just a fluke, right? Let's take a look at some real bikes. For this one, let's look at the Fat Bob versus the M109R. I covered both of these bikes in my Muscle Cruiser video, so I'll save you the preamble and just tell you that the M109R weighs 765 pounds, and the Harley comes in at, drumroll please, 676 pounds in running order. Now I had to send this one off to NASA to have it confirmed, but as it turns out, I was right. 676 is a smaller number than 765. 
Now, am I just cherry picking the right Harleys? Let's take a look at some dressers now and see. The Road Glide Special is what I would argue is the most attainable HD tourer. It has a big ol' fixed fairing, radio, infotainment, all the bells and whistles, and weighs in at 853 pounds wet. Now, what's the most comparable metric cruiser? Oh no, oh dear god no, he's not gonna bring up the Honda Goldwing, of course. The most famous touring bike in the world, the most desirable dad bike ever. Surely the HD can't compare. Well, the Goldwing weighs in at 847 pounds, only 6 pounds lighter. Guys, what you need to understand is cruisers use the weight to add stability, it's speed, and the center of gravity is down low. It's not exactly correct to say that weight doesn't matter in the cruiser market, but if you're looking at cruisers and scared by the weight, I urge you to just go ride one. They're shockingly manageable. But if you're dead set on the cruiser lifestyle and adamant that you need a light bike for some reason, you're going to struggle to get a Harley under 500 pounds. Something like the Rebel 500 or the smaller Suzuki Boulevards might be more your speed. It really is a shame that HD doesn't have a lightweight cruiser. Next up, let's take a look at price. Now this one has to be an easy win for the metric boys, right? And this is even a conversation that I've had before. It went something like this. Hey man, I'm thinking about getting a Harley. Bro, for that kind of money you could get two Yamahas and they'll be way more advanced. Admittedly, this is a tough sell. Let's take the super iconic Harley motorcycle, the Sportster 48. I think it really encompasses the Harley feel with a 2 into 2 exhaust, big old cruiser tire up front, and forward pegs. It's definitely the manliest looking sporty. The 48 comes with an air-cooled 1200cc Evo pushrod motor, 5-speed transmission, and an analog speedo with an itty-bitty digital odometer. Now what do you have to pay for this dinosaur? $11,299, and that's if you're happy in flat black. If you want it in orange or red, the right 48 colors, you're paying $12,000. Oh, but wait, there's more. You want some ABS with that? You know, that super critical life-saving feature that's included as standard on pretty much every single other motorcycle in the entire world? That'll be another 795 bucks. Okay, now let's see what $13,000 can buy you from Yamaha. They'll happily sell you an R6 for $12,199, and that comes with all of the bleeding edge race tech homologated for the street. You could get two R3s for $5,599 each, with more modern components, liquid cooling, and ABS. But what if you want one of their cruisers? Well, the XSR 700, like the one we're giving away, $8,499. The Bolt? 7999 bucks. What about that Bolt R I mentioned before? Only 8399 Sure the Bolts might not have liquid cooling and that sixth gear everybody keeps talking about, but at least they have the decency to not charge more than they're worth. If you take that money to the second hand market, the sky's the limit. You could probably get 10 trash Jixers and cobble together one actually presentable squid missile for like 9 grand. I'm exaggerating, of course. There's no such thing as a presentable Jixer. So, if there's all these better options for the money, why even consider a Harley? Now, this one is really going to come down to personal preference. You need to understand that you're probably going to pay a solid 20 to 30% in the Harley tax, or maybe even more. However, when you think about it, Harley's a premium brand, and in my opinion, there's no substitute. If you put a Harley next to a metric cruiser, I guarantee it'll draw way more attention. There's an ethereal quality to Harleys that really elevate them beyond their competition. Jesus, that's about the single most Ducatista thing I think I've ever said. Now finally, let's talk about the culture. This one's an unfortunate stigma that Harleys are saddled with, and it'll sound something like this. Hey man, I'm thinking about getting a Harley. Oh, come on dude, you don't want to be one of those guys, do ya? It's a fact that Harleys have long since been associated with a bad boy culture. No, not that one. I'm talking about legitimately bad people. From Sons of Anarchy to the Hells Angels, when you think of a Harley, you can't help but conjure the image of some skinhead looking guy in a patched vest. This goes all the way back to the 60s and 70s when the entirety of riding was wrapped up in that image, only to really be broken when Honda released their Nice campaign. What people don't seem to understand is that Harleys are just objects. They're not inherently good or bad. They're not going to make you a thug. 
It's down to the way you ride the bike. Are you going to be the guy with straight pipes revving your way down the main street of your town with no gear, ensuring that every ruined dinner inspires more apathy towards riders? Or are you going to be the rider that rides responsibly, doesn't bother other people, and just is having fun? The choice is up to you, but I would really urge my fellow Harley riders to consider the wider implications of their actions. If we want to not all be those guys, we need to show people that those guys are outliers. And there you have it, some of the most common reasons not to get a Harley shot all full of holes. I know some people out there are going to write this off, but I hope I've convinced a few of you to take another look at the motor company, because when you get down to it, it's a bunch of folks who are passionate about bikes, making some of the most iconic vehicles on the road. Also, I promise the next one won't get all philosophical. In the meantime, head over to yamminoob.co and sign up. You'll get entered to win one of our bikes, and it helps us keep our two-wheeled shenanigans going. I'll catch y'all later. Fact. According to former astronauts, space smells like a seared steak. Following a spacewalk, they said their suits had the distinctive smell of a hot meal. Now I'm gonna have to take that one on faith. Goodbye.